Welcome to Bridge Atlantic. We're your host, singer-songwriter Marcia Novelli. And music web designer Ross Barber. Today we're excited to welcome singer-songwriter Mikey Wax to the show. Mikey's a multi-instrumentalist who just releases a new album on Tukum Cove Records. Uh, you may have heard Mikey's music on commercials for Keeping Up With The Kardashians or on Sirius FM, where he's currently in rotation. With millions of Spotify plays, his first US headline tour underway, we're looking forward to getting to know more about him and what advice he has for his fellow musicians. So, uh, hey, Mikey, hey. how's it going? Hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going well. Hello it's from going Kansas well. City, Missouri. Oh, wow. Yeah. How's the weather? Uh, it's a little colder than I'd like. I think it's in yeah. the high 50s. But I was yeah, in Celsius because we, we are modern. <laughs> we use yeah, Celsius. I'm, I'm not even sure. It's, it's, it's cold. It's, it's a little It's just chilly. above it's zero, not, right? It's like, what, sun- six, seven? Or am I doing no, the math no, no, wrong? No. It's like it's like it's like an early spring day. It's just a little windy. Okay. Yeah. It's probably okay. about average for here. I mean, we've actually had this, today is apparently the hottest day of the year so far. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm actually wearing shorts and t-shirt, oh, which is fancy very for unusual Scotsman. for over here. So yeah. we get fancy maybe two or three weeks of um, semi warm weather, and then that's it. Then so that's it. we make the most yeah. of it when we get it. Oh man, then I guess I can't really complain. <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> All right, Mikey. So we'd like to ask three things about yourself that you think everyone should know. Three things about myself that everyone should know. It's, um, that's a tough question, you know? Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say one, um, I'm kind of uh, very picky about food on the road. So like we have to stop at like a Whole Foods or like a Chipotle or something that's like kind of on the healthier side. I'm kind of a health nut, a little bit of a health nut. Are you vegetarian? So, not vegetarian. I, I'm I eat everything. I eat everything, but um, but just, like I'm a little complicated when it comes to the road. Some people just want to get Subway, and I'm like, no, I can't do that. I'd rather like you know keep going until we find something that's like either local or like organic or something like that. So a little that's bit good. Of a, that's nothing yeah, wrong with that, man. And Whole Foods is awesome. So <laughs> it's a little maybe we'll get sponsored. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's a little expensive. Uh, Whole Foods is great. <laughs> yeah. Number two, uh, let's see. Um, are these things that we don't want people to know or that? No, uh, well, they-, um, they can be anything. I mean, we would like it to be something that people aren't going to find anywhere else. So and- your deepest, darkest secrets are fine. Yeah. Us. <laughs> Exclusive. This, this is the point where it all comes out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Let's see. Um, I would say I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac. Just a little both. bit. Yeah. Uh, that would be number two. But you know what? I think every musician to some extent is a little bit of a hypochondriac. <laughs> Well, we're, we're a little bit crazy, so. <laughs> um, and number three. Well, can you give us an example of that? When, when has so that like, come out? If, if we're on the road and we fill up like at a gas station, like I'll have to go wash my hands like a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. really bad with that. Like <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. thinks I'm OCD, but really, yeah, yeah. I just don't want germs in my hands. You know how many people know, have touched that so, thing? <laughs> I, I'm a lot like that. I, 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 yeah, think, I find you, that the road, you. being on tour brings out most of these sides of me because like you know it's hard to get good food and it's hard to stay clean on the road you know you're you're using a hotel room every night where thousands of other people sleep it's just kind of it gets to you a little bit so does does ever bother you thinking about that you're laying in a bed that like thousands of other people have laid even though they've changed the sheets yeah it's been changed i mean as long as you can't see any evidence of people that have been there then but 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 you you can with the the microscope (laughs) or a green light yeah yeah we we get to the hotel we take a look we make sure everything's okay and you know We try not to get too bad with it because in the end you always get home and you're fine, but it's like, you know, you get kind of caught up in it. You're like, oh, this is kind of <laughs> gross, but I don't know how yeah. to go with it. So yeah. I would say those, those are two. And then third is, um, uh, what's a good one? I would say, um, yeah, I'm really close to my family. My brother's my manager. My parents are very uh, supportive parents. My older brother has uh, two babies now and I'm really close uh, with my oh. you know, niece and nephew. So I'd say I'm a family and friend oriented guy. I like that. Yeah, that is very like sweet. That. that makes me happy. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move on to uh, "You Lift Me Up," which okay. has received nearly six million Spotify streams. Oh, that's um, crazy. I know. That's all? 
I, I know yeah, that's okay. only six million. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, that probably just trans- that probably doesn't translate to, to much money. But that's a whole different uh, <laughs> we'll subject. Let's talk about that. Yeah, or yeah. let's talk about that. What does that translate <laughs> yeah. into? Like twenty bucks? You know what? I, I don't even know because it goes to my record company. So I, I think it's, uh, it's more you. than twenty bucks. It, it, it's actually not a bad paycheck, but it's yeah. you know I I don't really see much of it. But yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And yeah. it's uh, it's currently featured in the Keeping Up with the Kardashians promo. Oh, the promo commercial. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and that awesome. I do say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. probably that's better sync licensing there. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So it uh, allows yeah. us to keep to keep uh, supporting ourselves and keep doing what we're doing. So oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. So what was your question? Sorry. So how did that happen? Um, how did you get the sync placement? Um, that was really through uh, a friend of mine, uh, a, um, a music supervisor who I, I became pretty friendly with out in Los Angeles when I went to visit. Uh, we hung out with her in her office, she came to my show, and she really loved my music, she was really supportive, and she was trying to find a home for it where it could have good exposure. And so, you know, it took a while, it took, you know, maybe over a year or so, but eventually she found, you know, she kept pitching it and stuff like that, and eventually the Kardashians, uh, people really liked it, and, and it worked for their promo, so. It What's just her name? Uh, her first name's Rebecca, I won't give away her last name. But. Gotcha. Yeah. Rebecca. I was yeah, wondering if Rebecca. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Re- hi, Rebecca. High five. Yeah, we we had okay, someone else in the show. I, I, I was wondering if it was possibly the same music supervisor. Okay, yeah, I don't. I just don't want too many people to hound her and be like, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Awesome. And yeah, you've previously great. supported Parachute, Matt Wirtz, John McLaughlin, Howie Day, Ryan Cabrera. Am I saying that right? Our yeah. buddy Tyler Hilton. He was our first. Yeah. Uh, he was the first uh, guest that we ever launched with this yeah. podcast. So, and uh, Andy Grammer. You've oh, toured awesome. a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, we've. Uh, it's been it's been a lot of touring over the past four years or so. So, it's been. Uh, I've been very. I feel like fortunate to have the chance to open for a lot of those people. You know, they're some of my favorite artists. So, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and the amount of exposure you can get too doing these kind of things and and just going on tour with other people and being able to to open for them, I think, is just it's very important. Yeah, it's a great way to really build your career. Just like mm-hmm. you know getting to play for their fans and kind of turning that you know i noticed that i'm doing my own headlining tour and a lot of the fans from nice. the parachute tour came back out to my show see that's really, so important yeah that's really all you can ask for and yeah. um so yeah I'm, is this I'm, your yeah. is this your first headlining tour this is my first time headlining yeah oh congratulations thanks thanks man. Yeah. that must be so exciting for you it's been exciting and nerve-wracking. It's yeah. been everything at once. You know, I was like, is anybody going to come? I hope people come. Yeah, then, right, right. And it's all on then, you this time, right? Exactly. It's all on me. And uh, no, it's been a pretty successful tour. You know, there's been one or two nights on like a Monday or Sunday where it hasn't been the best yeah. crowd. But Those are the happens. worst nights. And that's expected. And then, yeah. you know, but for the most part, it's been it's been nice. So That is so cool. What's been your highlight uh, of, of any tour? So uh, it could be either the headlining tour or times you've supported other acts what would be either the highlight or the most memorable moment good or bad yeah. uh, oh good or bad um <laughs> preferably good but yeah bad can I be would okay. say, I mean, unless unless there's a really bad entertaining story <laughs> entertaining yeah. story. um you know part of me wants to say that the show where i was opening for parachute in salt lake city it was a thousand plus people it was the biggest show i've ever played there's something so thrilling about sharing your music with that many people in in one sitting so that is like a natural kind of rush and a high and it's an amazing feeling but i would say what was most important to me has been this tour you know some of the shows where there's even been just like a hundred people there but they're your true supportive fans and they're there to see you and after the show like you know, these people paid money to see you. They, they spent time maybe getting a babysitter to watch their kids. They came out and there's something so rewarding about that, that they really took the time to be there. And I try to just, I, after every show, I meet every single person. I tell them how appreciative I am because, you know, really without those true fans, you don't, you know, it's hard to maintain a career. So for me, it's been this, this tour, like, you know, every show I'm just amazed that people have come out. So, um, I would, I would say that. And I saw on Twitter that when one of the shows, was, I think, was cancelled last minute due to like technical problems or venue problems, yeah. you actually went to the venue and just hung out with your fans that had yeah. turned up for the show. That was really cool. Yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, we did that. You know, that we uh, ended up going downtown with a few of them and just, you know, had some drinks and just hung out because, you know, they spent the time to come there. And I think that was like a, that was like a random weekday show. And um, it wa- there wasn't a lot of advance notice that the show was going to be cancelled. So some people were already waiting outside to get in and so we just you know hung out with them and you know it was a nice night they say in some in some uh 
in some respect that it was a better we put on a better show when we were just were out drinking because we were <laughs> wasted together and like they got, to see, they, got to see the, they got to see the band and everything and how silly we can be so yeah. and they're gonna remember that forever i think more than a show so yeah that's awesome yeah so not only do you tour but you're also a big fan of house shows yeah that's how i got my start really yeah so i kind of um i had like a decent fan base to begin with from youtube and um I, I didn't have an agent or anything like that so people wanted to see shows so i started putting the word out that i would do these house concerts in people's homes i was doing them for free and uh, nice. i was like if you could get 20 25 people together i'll come play your show and i kind of lined up like two or three per city and i started doing them just across the country and that was really how i got started just playing for fans because i couldn't get into any venues at first any particular particularly memorable ones Oh yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, everyone likes to have a good time. I found that that they really, the people are very respectful, and you know, everyone just wants to have a good time. They want to drink with you. They want to cook you something. They want to, you know, be very hospitable, which is which is great. Um, I'd That's say cool. yeah. anyone want to cook you food, and you're like, oh, is it organic? <laughs> <laughs> I always take a home cooked meal. I think I got okay, cool. house concerts. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, Very you know, cool. everyone always asks me, is there any crazy story from them? And there's not really anything that is too crazy. I mean, like you're there and sometimes there's crazy fans and stuff like that, but there's nothing that's like out of the ordinary where, you know, some, someone like, you know, Well, what's a crazy fan in, in, in a, in a house, at a house concert. They just want like tons of pictures, tons of hugs, you know, that's good. Yeah, yeah it's good. You know, like, <laughs> I th sometimes think there's a hug limit. You know, I think once you're pushing 10 <laughs> hugs, it's like okay you know we, like awkward now of, like are, are we are we cuddling like do i yeah. are you gonna pay for this <laughs> <laughs> do i need to wear a condom <laughs> like, you, know what I mean? you start getting nervous <laughs> exactly marcy it sounds like you're talking from experience there it's happened yeah so yeah. you know i've got this image in my mind of you like you know just laying down after the show and crashing and you know you just kind of fall asleep before you're heading to your next show and you just wake up and there's people just kind of staring at you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you i know, have like, another hug <laughs> in the beginning i did stay at people's houses and then i realized there's kind of you you don't want to cross that barrier between I was gonna say, yeah. becoming you know uh, it, it, it's a fine line. You want to be friends and everything, but you don't want to, I don't know if you spending the night is really the thing I'd recommend for people doing it. Well, you know, Ross and I, we, we've talked, I, I think we've mentioned on the show a couple times before how, you know, the, the uh, relationship between artist and fan has really changed over the years. It used to be well. where, yeah, in a good way, like, you know, it's, it's about being approachable now. It's about being a real person. For but sure. I think if you lose 100%, of the mystique, you know what I mean? It, right. I think there needs to be a little bit there. Cause I, I guess the way I look at it is, is my favorite artist, you know? Um, I don't know if I'd want every single one of them to stay the night because I might not like them as much. I agree with you. There, you know, I, might know, I might see too much of them, you know? One time, once you realize that they're fully human and they're kind of have yeah. their own weird things or whatever, you're like, oh, well, you know, that kind of ruins the, uh, I guess the the thought of what your hero is like, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, and they always say you should never meet your heroes, and and all yeah. this stuff. And um, I mean, I've been lucky in all the people that I've met that I've like admired and I've been a fan of. They've all been awesome. So I've not had same, that same. that moment yet where oh, yeah. I've spoken to someone and they've just been a complete disappointment and it's ruined, you know, my image of them. I well, you've spoken to me though, Russ. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I would never be like you know. If I was, if I did spend the night or something, I'd never be too rude. But you also don't want to like just, I guess. Uh, I, I sometimes feel bad. It's like you know, let me leave. You know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You've done so much to me. I for, for me, I feel like almost I'm taking advantage of your. You know, you you want to cook breakfast, you want to cook dinner. Thank you, thank right. you. Like I, it means a lot right. to me. But I almost feel like I'm taking too much advantage, and I don't want to do that. So, but in terms of fans being more like friends now, there is something to be said about that because I've fans that'll come out to every show and they'll bring me my favorite cookies or stuff like that and like you know it's just it's very nice but at the same time it's it's very different from what it used to be yeah. absolutely yeah. And, and you are in the toys in the back of your mind what if i eat this and there is poison in it <laughs> 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 i'm sure it's fine it crosses, i appreciate it, it but, what if? <laughs> but uh, you know i, I trust them we gotta just go All around i'm safe <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is sometimes they'll cook me like 30 they'll bake me 30 cookies and it's like oh, oh am i really gonna sit in a car and eat 30 cookies like you know i'll have but a day i would i know i don't would don't lie don't lie but it on. depends on the show sometimes you'll have like five cookies afterwards and the next morning you'll wake up and you'll see them yeah. and you're like oh i feel gross and you just gotta throw it out <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um, so you yeah. signed to two ken cove records yeah how how recent was that 
I signed, uh, that was a year ago. That was a year ago. And from that point, it took you about a year to release your self-titled? That was earlier yeah, this year. Signed, I signed with them, and then I released the album uh, four months later. And okay. then it's, it, it's been out since then. So it's been out since uh, last July. So, My um, notes are wrong. <laughs> this is okay, yeah. yeah. I, I, feel okay. was, I feel it was released well, earlier thing, this year. The thing is, is like, it's okay. We didn't really get started um, promoting it until like later. Like it was a soft release. Like it came yeah. out. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and it started really building momentum month, months later. So you know. Hmm. Technically, to me, it was released just yesterday, you know? <laughs> you know what? I think things are changing a lot, too. Like, you hear a lot of a lot more soft releases than you, than you, I think, used to. It used to be, you know, all this promotion leading up to it. And, yeah. I, and I think for the, the maybe the, the hugest pop artists in the world, like Beyonce or something, I think that's still how it goes. You know, you build right. up and there's that hard launch and that's it. But I think yeah. for a lot, of, a lot of artists now, it's about the momentum. Like, it's out, it's available, build momentum. Exactly. And then, you know, you we can didn't keep know how promoting to- it. Yeah, we didn't know how to promote it first. We didn't know mm-hmm. what the single was. We didn't know how fe- people would react to it. So right. you kind of, it's like a wait and see game. You see what's taking off, what, what it becomes, and then you can kind of, you know, build your marketing and promotion from there. So Absolutely. And it's it, because, and Ross and I have talked about this before too, I think in, in this world where everything's kind of archived now, like iTunes, it's always there. Um, it's not like most people don't go into record stores anymore. Where you know, if the album's right. not do, if it's not number one in the first week, then you don't really see it on the shit. It's hidden. Yeah, it's not like it expires. Right. It's it's right. more yes, of it doesn't a long expire. game exactly. than, exactly. than anything. But people yeah. can find your previous releases and love them more or ten years down the road, and it doesn't matter to them. You know, so that's yeah, kind that's of the benefit. I get, I get tweets you know? almost every day, and people would be like, "How have I never heard this song? It's off my first record." And it's like, that's well, awesome. you know, it's like that's just that's just the way it is it's you know it's your i guess once it's out there it's it's now like you said it's it's on itunes it's there you can always find it you know so exactly yeah exactly which i can see where where some artists want to keep putting out music keep putting out music but there's still that balance between quality versus quantity sure you know? and, and i'm a lot i sometimes feel like i've released too much music in just four five years now and like you know i question do i want to take some of the stuff off of itunes because i don't want it to people to get you know conflicted with what i'm releasing now because it is somewhat different and it, you know you see the evolution of an artist growing so i contemplate sometimes taking off like you know the earlier eps and stuff like that but i haven't yet so get them while they're still there is the message exactly <laughs> yeah right. do you have any uh, advice for aspiring musicians who want to reach the same level of success that you've been able to obtain yeah, you know, well, first of all, I'm still trying to find, I'm still asking for advice from other people. So, you of know, it, it, it goes, it goes round and round. But I, I would say um, one, one guy said something to me once uh, when I was just starting out and it wasn't even like somebody trying to be an artist. He, he, he was a bass player in a band and he said to me, because uh, he was, he was playing with a pretty big band um, at the time. I can't remember their name, but they had, they had like a nice following. They were playing for a couple hundred people a night. They were, they were doing it. And um, I asked him like, advice and he said he's like if you want to go on a diet you know you have to eat right and you have to work out he's like if you want to be a musician you have to practice all the time play out and like write songs he's like sometimes there's no hidden secret to it you just have to do it i was like that's kind of interesting because like the truth is is when i started touring more and i started really focusing on my writing and stuff like that i became better at it and you just you know you kind of grow from there so i would say my advice is really just to get out there and, and do it. That, that's the only thing I could say. That's the only way I've seen stuff with my career progress is when I'm out there touring and, and, and in the studio writing and, and just focusing all my energy on music. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So is it Mike, Mikey, or Michael? What do you like being called? Well, <laughs> growing up, um, I was Mikey because I was like a crazy little kid and like, like if there was something broken in the house, it was like Mikey did it, you know, like, uh, I gotcha. uh, yeah. So, uh, that kind of stuck in like all the girls in like middle school and high school called me Mikey. I guess like I had like some kind of like innocence thing or like crazy thing. I, I don't even know what it was, but like, um, <laughs> so was it I Mikey kinda, then? It was Mikey then. And I kind of stuck with that for music. Cause I started recording and releasing music when I was like 13 years old. Oh, so wow. I just never changed it. So, um, but I would say, um, you know, my friends call me Mike, and I would say my parents, my family, you know, they call me Mike or Mike Eats, which is, it depends, like, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if something, if I forgot something, I'm very forgetful, and they're like, oh, Mike, you forgot it, like, you know, like, that's just, <laughs> and Sounds like, cute, though. yeah, and then when people are angry at me, it's Michael, of course. Yeah, it's always your full <laughs> name when people are angry with you. Yes. Like, yeah, what's your middle name, R? It starts Ross. with an R? 
Yeah. Right. Oh, there you go. Michael Ro Ross Wax, right? You yeah. get that? Yeah. Yeah. And like, and you know, my, my best friends will just call me Wax. Like that was my name. when I was like, an, I used to play hockey and like I was an athlete and like, so they would just be like, you know, Wax. It's a cool it. last name, man. Very cool. Yeah, it's right. a cool last name. Yeah. 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 Well, Mikey, are you ready for 20 questions? Let's do it. All right. And here we go. Coffee or tea? Uh, well, can, can I give a little bit to this? Because this is sure. actually an important question. Okay. okay. I, b believe it or not, I was a big, big, big coffee drinker for a very long period of time. And I forced myself to get off it because I was having a venti coffee from Starbucks in the morning, a venti in the afternoon before a show. Wow. And then I needed one to drive at night. I was addicted. So now, now I'm a tea guy. Good for you. Ooh, good. Yeah. Meat or veggies? Oh, both? You can have both. I'll okay. allow it. Marcia won't, but I'll allow it. <laughs> If CD I had to pick meat, you know. Mm. Ooh, you've lost <laughs> my <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> CD or vinyl? My reasoning for that is because after a show, the only thing I want is meat. Like veggies, <laughs> I starve myself before shows. I can't eat you, you before need protein. You, you need, need protein. protein so that's, yeah. that's that. Yeah. Um, so what was it? CD or vinyl? Yeah. Uh, neither. <laughs> no. Um, I, I would say uh, I, I have my I have, phone. <laughs> I, I, I have a vinyl collection at home, so vinyl. Nice. Star Wars or Star Trek? Ah, uh, Star Wars. Canada or Scotland? I've never been to Scotland, uh, so I gotta say ca Canada, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Kim or Chloe or neither? Chloe. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Can I answer neither? <laughs> you can answer whatever you want, Marcio. Yeah. None of them. <laughs> and Breaking Bad or House of Cards? Uh, Breaking Bad. House of Cards kind of lost me the last season. I didn't, I didn't love the last season. The latest one? Because I, I, I'm having a hard time getting into it it's, as myself. It's just, it lost me. Yeah. But, but the first season's amazing, so I don't know. Yeah, agreed. But Breaking Bad was, you know, consecutively incredible, so you just got to give it up for Breaking Get Bad. into Better Call Saul if you haven't already. It's fantastic. I, I heard it's good, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Indie or major? Uh, there's something to be said for both. Right now, I'm on an indie, and but I have, I feel like, the leverage of a major behind them if I needed it. So, um, I feel my music is pop music. I, I would go major. Very cool. good answer to not burn any bridges. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're very... both great. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they do. Right now I'm on an indie and I'm one of three artists and, and I like that. I have, you know, a yeah. lot of the attention and that's great. And, you know, you can get lost in sometimes a major label. Yes. So, um, but I would say with my music, it probably is more in that, like, you know, they would know, they would know what to do with it more. Yeah, I think, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The Voice or American Idol or neither? Uh, I guess neither, but um, the voice, I guess. I'm not into those shows, but I do like the premise of the voice a little bit better that they don't see the person. Yeah. I like yeah. how it's based on the actual voice, but yeah. I'm not and into like, this. And I like how the judges are like, you know, modern, you know, stars and, you know, you kind of yeah. learn something from when they, you know, sometimes. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yoda or Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> uh, I guess Yoda. <laughs> he's so cute. You know, he's a cute little guy. Gotta give it up to him. <laughs> Friends or Seinfeld? Uh, Seinfeld. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Uh, Celine Dion. Ah, you might have been the first person to ever say Celine, <laughs> Celine Dion. Dion. Yeah, I'll need to go back through the, all the old and see if anyone else has, so. uh, has ever said uh, good old Celine. I mean, I mean what I, a I, voice. Come on, right? I know, I no, know. I was going to say, you know, I got into Marilyn Manson as a really young teenager and I just, I loved a lot of a lot everything about him but yeah celine dion i was also raised on my mom listened to celine dion all the time and i just people make fun of her i'm like you know what shut up she's she got an amazing voice. She's, oh my God. I, bought, I bought my old flatmate uh, like the celine dion live in las vegas uh, yeah. dvd a while ago and we watched it and we were just like she's, she's just phenomenal. amazing just insane. pro yeah. she's the yeah. definition oh, of yeah. pro yeah. you know what i mean like exactly. awesome. flawless, flawless vocals every time yeah right? absolutely yep. absolutely yeah Jack Daniels or Jim Beam? Jack Daniels. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. <laughs> there you are. Twerk or work? <laughs> Both. I like it. Same time? 
<laughs> Same time, why not? Yes, thank you. That's what I say. <laughs> I knew we, I knew we'd get along, man. <laughs> Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Ricky Gervais. I love that man. Whale or kale? Kale. You know what? He got the question. We don't really understand the question, but you got it. <laughs> and you were all about it. Kale's awesome. Kale's you gotta make Kale's awesome. Man, Kale's yeah. okay. Oh, <laughs> Kale's so good for you, Roz. <laughs> Look, that's it's all right. Our hands are it's getting fine. to the camera. That's up. I get excited that, like when you when you go to a restaurant and there's a Caesar salad, but it's a kale Caesar salad. Oh, You're like, oh, so I good. Step up. Yeah. <laughs> is it organic? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Bet Midler or the Riddler? Mm, the Riddler. Cool. And the last question. This will Locked. decide your future. Okay. We're going to pretend I that there's the future of what, but the future. The Ross, future of relationships. Yeah. Okay. So Ross or Marcio? <laughs> Ross or Marcio? Mm. Are we talking friends here? I don't know. Uh, you tell me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably more of a Ross guy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <All> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I just don't know Marcio. Where, where is Marcio? Am I supposed to know? I think he's, I think he's uh, oh, wait. deeply oh, upset wait. right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. That was the best response. This is the best response you've ever had on our show. It really is. I just forgot for a second that you guys are talking about you two. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. But uh, we have to books. accept your first that's answer. So, uh, so, yeah. This is our 30th interview, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our 30th yeah. interview. Who does get the more vote? Who who does get the most votes? Um, well, usually guests just say they like us both. And they say yeah, that they, they say some pick. weird things. But that they then we have like, some you know, people on like Mikey Wax. <laughs> That just jumped to the ground. Who's Marcio? <laughs> so think, who, the hell, who the hell is this Marcio guy? <laughs> <laughs> you asked a okay, friend's question. My head was thinking friends. I'm like, Ross, was there another character named Marcio on Friends? That was the first thing I thought about. <laughs> I'm like, I guess Ross. It's I'm like, a good. Ross. <laughs> that's probably that's Bro, probably my most favorite I'm answer. <laughs> okay, okay yeah, so, so Ross, you just take another, care of the rest of the entry. I'm <laughs> kidding. No, Another thing about me is I don't fully wake up until I have a cup of tea, and me I'm too. also and I'm also an idiot. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> You're self-effacing. I love it. Oh I love God. it. I love it. Do you have any music recommendations? What are you, what are you listening to right now that uh, yeah that everyone would like? We listen to the new <gasps> Death Cab for Cutie record, which is like really good. I recommend it. Uh, I like the James Bay record. Yes. Yeah. And um, I like uh, City in Color. Mm. Yeah, phenomenal. we're both big fans. Oh, it's yeah. really big here. And then you know, you know, we're into the, uh, the the Walk the Moon record is really like you know, just fun. So um, I'd say those four are pretty much like what I've been listening to. Cool. Very cool. And and Marcio's music. <laughs> wait, wait, who's Marcio? I was gonna I was gonna make the joke when you said even listening. Definitely not Marcio. <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? Is Marcio and Friends? I don't know. Was he a character on Friends? He could be. <laughs> It was Phoebe's long lost brother. <laughs> oh my god. Good times, man. Good times. Oh my god. So where can people <laughs> find you online, Mikey? Um, I'm pretty easy to find. A anywhere like my anything Mikey Wax is, is Mikeywax.com. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey Wax on Twitter. Twitter. Mikey Wax, Instagram Mikey Facebook, Wax. Everything. That is the way to do it. Consistency. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Mike, I would love to do this forever, man. You're a really great guy. Come back on the show, though. We'd love to have you back on the yeah, show. We'll have you on months. and you'll interview us. That's, that's, that'll that's be, it. That'll be, that'll be the guys. We'll just sit thanks, here and, and thanks for the interview. Thanks for the uh, the great questions. I've never done an interview like this before, so it's been a lot of fun. Cool. I hope awesome. it was a good thing and not uh, I'm never coming back thing. I've never no, done no, an interview no, no, like this back. again. I will never do this interview <laughs> again. <laughs> being real and like my, I've always been like that with my fans, so I think they're gonna love this. So cool. That's awesome. the goal of the show to just sit down, have a chat, and just happen to record it and share it with people. Yep. yep. You know, and I hope people realize this is truly just a chat. With you know, there's no pretension here. Like we are literally yeah. just having a chat, and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Okay. Hey. hey Come back again. Thanks so Talk much, brother. Guys. All right. See you Talk later. You Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more. And please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome. And we'll see you on next week's episode. <laughs>